Right. Welcome to the part 36. We will look at some more questions on AWS Certified Developer Associate. Please focus on the concepts. Do not try to mug the answers. Concepts alone will help you clear these certifications. Uh, let us look at the questions. There is a company. They have deployed single page application on AWS. Okay. The application stores assets in S3 bucket. So they are storing all the assets in S3 bucket. The application has a cloud front distribution that is configured with S3 bucket as an origin. So what is cloud front? See, you can securely deliver content with low latency, high transfer speeds. That is cloud front. Web applications can use it. Netflix, etc., can use it. And then there is a Amazon API Gateway API access, a Lambda functions that store information in DynamoDB. So DynamoDB is a NoSQL database that is used to create non-relational databases. Something for applications like Uber, Lyft, and etc., where you want very high performance. There we use such kind of databases. So it is pretty evident that here in this requirement we want very high performance because first of all we are making use of CloudFront and second is we are making use of DynamoDB. Okay, the application in this payload we are includes 20 fields of uh, sorry 20 fields and these are all sensitive data. All sensitive fields it may be PII, it may be uh, your uh, social security number, passport number, and so on. Which combination of steps should a developer should take to protect the sensitive data through its entire life cycle? So basically, whatever happens. Whatever happens, this is a security question and they want to protect the sensitive data. So whatever the story is, whether you consider it a noise and etc. with so many with so many moving components and so many things. First is, it is the system is very uh, high performance system and they need to implement security so that your sensitive data is protected throughout the entire life cycle. So what should we do now? <coughs> so uh, what we have to choose two answers. So here first thing is. Uh, e saying that uh, let's store the data in S3 bucket using server side encryption and uh, with S3 managed keys, transfer the encrypted data from S3 bucket to DynamoDB table. Okay, okay. Um, see, uh, my, my main concern here in this case is see, here in this case, you have you have to you are using DynamoDB. Okay, here. So, with the data sensitive data is there not on s3 alone so yeah so what, what this guy says is we will um, first store the data in s3 encrypt it there and then transfer it to DynamoDB But that is not how in real time it does not work that way you will also have to do something at all places so this will not work d is saying let us set up a network load balancer okay for api gateway integrations so for private integration so we already have API gateway setup network load balancer is a load balancing solution it is not a security solution C says let us create a certificate and associate with network load so this certificate if we use this will do encryption in motion uh, this will do encryption in the motion, but then since we are <coughs> using CloudFront with CloudFront network load balancer and using certificates, that's not the way to go. With CloudFront, this is the way to go. You create a function to encrypt data. When cl cloud front processes, so that is in real time it is happening. Then you distribute. Uh, you have to configure the distribution to invoke lambda edge function, the same function when the origin request event occurs. Uh, if a request happens, then also you activate this. So there we know data is encrypted, and then uh, you are using KMS. So here we are telling to use KMS because uh, for encryption what keys to use was what keys to use for encryption where will you keep 
so that is KMS. So here you keep keep the keys for encryption, or if you want to digitally sign the data, uh, you can do that. In this next question, there is a developer. They have he has created a lambda function in Python. And this lambda function reads data from this bucket. This is the bucket S3. And it is writing to a DynamoDB table. From here it comes and puts into DynamoDB. So DynamoDB we all know this is a no SQL non-relational database. Uber companies like Uber use it for very high performance and S3 we all know it is a cloud object storage any objects you store there okay so we understand what this developer is trying to do but uh, what else so I, this guy is written a lambda function so lambda is serverless compute you can run code without thinking about servers or clusters okay so this you can use different language you can use python or or ruby uh, java but this guy has chosen python so the function is successfully invoked from event notification when an object is created the moment object is created here this function lambda function gets activated but they are saying the function fails when it attempts to um, do this movement no it is failing here what to do now what why is it failing that is what we have to say why is it failing why is it failing so he is saying that the function's concurrency limit exceeded or what concurrency limit when it is failing to write anything it is not that five threads we were able to write but one thread failed not that way everything is failing then b they are telling that uh, dynamo db needs index to support writes write index is required for reads in dynamo db not for writes and then D is telling Dynamo DB probably it is not running in the same AZ as Lambda. See that can happen. You have a multi AZ environment. So some objects may be in one AZ, the other may be in other AZ. Not only this, even you can have geo or geographically. Uh, displaced data like multi region some objects may be in other region so that is not a reason for uh, this failure not even once this guy is able to reach from this place to this place okay not even once that means the security guard is not allowing this guy to get in that means it is access problem a lambda function does not have I am permissions to write. See, as a doctor, you have to see if there is a headache, then what can be the root cause? That guy didn't go to party for one or two days, or this guy is stressed, or this guy is not hydrated well, or this guy has gas problem can be multiple things so here also same similarly if not even a single time this guy could write data that means there is a permission problem i hope you understood the concept here the dynamo db is a beautiful database very useful so you can pause this piece a quick quick knowledge bit you can take pause this and read this portion
coming in, but can your database scale to handle all the requests? Amazon DynamoDB. It was built to handle internet scale applications because traditional databases just weren't built to handle Amazon Prime Day's millions of requests per second. It's a this means you can sleep in peace without being paid. Not only are encryption and data recovery built in, but DynamoDB has an industry-leading service level agreement. DynamoDB handles more than 1 trillion requests per day. So you understood DynamoDB and see these are use cases where you can use like you are trying to scale up gaming platforms or you are trying to deliver retail experiences. So this next question, uh, there is a development team. They want to do CICD. And they are using code pipeline. For what? For what? For automating the code build and deployment. They want to store the program code to prepare for CICD. Which service they should use to store their program code? See, they want to use code pipeline. Okay, they want to use this. This is continuous delivery pipelines for fast and reliable updates. But where will we store the code? Where will we store the code? Code deploy is for code deployment not for code storage code guru is a security solution not for code storage artifact is for compliance reports not for code storage Code commit is your private Git repository. You can collaborate on code. That means you can store the code and share with someone also. And they can modify that code and they can keep adding some new features. This is exactly what you need. So this would be our answer. Code commit is the git repository it's like a git repository in aws world golden words focus please golden words code commit is similar to git repository code commit is the aws world service see as it is you guys keep spending money on something or the other very small premium you can purchase the or join and become a member you can purchase the membership cloud kernel or cloud ninja membership you can gain access to so many important questions the free questions plus the paid content will help you target the certification successfully the concepts are the keys we always tell please focus on the concepts same or similar questions may come but don't be so hardwired that if the options get switched you don't understand what to choose don't become that way so we always teach how to focus on concepts to weed out wrong options and we are totally dedicated to help you with cloud certifications on AWS, Azure, and Google Cloud. The previous part we uploaded in the members area. Please view that. It has important questions. See you in the next part.